um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever it is that you're watching us and karibuni sana to Limitless at Mamlaka Hill Chapel. We are so glad that you guys could make it to join us to today, for today's service. Uh, today we're going to have a different kind of service. We're going to have an extended, a time of extended prayer, extended worship and praise unto our Lord Jesus Christ. So before we begin, I'd uh, first like to encourage you to stop what you're doing Join us, join us. Karibuni to tumsifu mungu, tumuinue, na tusifu jina lake. So we're going to begin with a word of prayer and then we'll continue. So let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, King of all glory, we bless your name, Lord Jesus. We lift your name on high. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are, oh my Father, we thank you because we because you live, we can face tomorrow. We thank you because of the hope that is found in you, Lord Jesus. We thank you because this day we are the redeemed of you, oh my Father. We are co-heirs with the Son and heirs of you, our Father. We glorify you, Lord, because we have been adopted, oh my Father, into your kingdom, oh my Father, by which we can be called your sons and your daughters. This morning, King of all glory, we acknowledge our weakness before you and we choose to surrender unto you, oh God, asking that King of all glory, you shall work mightily within us, oh my Father. I pray that King of all glory, whatever is going to happen to today in today's service, that it may be to the glory and to the honor of your holy name. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We say thank you. Any voice that is not from you, oh God, we ask that, Lord, it be silenced in the name of Jesus Christ, that your voice alone may be heard unto the glory and to the honor of your holy name. In Jesus' name do we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
desire fill us so oh my father may we desire no one else may we desire nothing else but you O oh god be exalted may your name be lifted up on high in jesus name we pray amen 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 tell tell someone press towards the mark tell someone press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling we're going to let go of the past we're going to hold on unto jesus let's do this in the high calling. Now we want to tell Jesus that Anastaki is safe. Amen. Amen.
que a se fa Oh, eu é vongo, una bonha, uma barriga, uma inua Oh, eu é peque, tua cusifu, porque a se fa
interceding as the lost become the found. You can never be defeated, for you wear the victor's crown. You are Jesus, the Messiah. You're the hope of all the world. By your grace, I live and breathe to worship you. guys for joining us this afternoon and welcome to Limitless where we get to be trained by the word, transformed by the word and transferred into the world to preach the word. My name is Brian Opole and I'm joined by a very lovely lady. Lian Wanjiro. Yes and uh, we are very glad that you guys are able to stream this afternoon. Yet again thank you very much worship team for leading us into that awesome session of praise and worship and may God bless you abundantly. And as you know, we will be having an extended time of worship and prayer as a conclusion to the series that we've been doing for the past four weeks. So I pray that you're um, ready to sing and to pray together as we go back to the worship team for another session of praise and worship. that you will be with me when I'm standing in the fire I will not be 
when David was so overcome with so many things, overcome with the weight of his sin, overcome with the weight of the world. But what he would do is that he said, still my soul will praise you, Lord. Still my soul will exalt you. Still my soul will lift you up. It might be feeling very hard to pray. It might be feeling very hard to come before God and confess your sins. But that is why we have this time to come before him and sing. To lift him up, to give him glory for who he is. That no matter how far we might feel that we are from him, he always listens to us. He's always ready to bring us home. He's always ready to hear our cries. This next song simply says, I will sing, O God. In every circumstance, in every situation, I will praise you, O Father. Lord, you seem so far away. A million miles or more it feels today. And though I haven't lost my faith, I must confess right now that it's hard for me to pray. But I don't know what to say And I don't know where to start But as you give the grace With all that's in my heart I will sing I will praise Even in my darkest hour Through the sorrow and the pain I will see, I will pray, I will pray, lift my hands to you, lift my hands to honor you, because your word is true, I will see. Lord, it's hard for me to see. All the thoughts and plans you have for me But I will put my trust in you Knowing that you died to set me free But I don't know what to say Nowhere to start, but as you give the grace with all that's in my heart, I will sing, I will praise, even in my darkest hour, through the sorrow and the pain. I will sing.
lifted up in our praises, O oh Lord. Be lifted up in our hearts, O oh Father. worship team for that awesome set of um, song worship and even as we meditate on the songs that have been sung uh, I would like us to take a moment in prayer even in view of the series that we have been doing and today we want to pray for our unity as men and our unity to God who is our creator and at this moment I'd like to ask Leanne to pray for us for the first um, prayer item let's pray Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this afternoon. We thank you so much for the opportunity that you have given us to be here, to worship you, O oh Lord, to be with one another, even though virtually, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Mighty Father, for life, for love, even through this pandemic, O oh Lord. Uh, we would like to pray for um, those who are experiencing separation physically, Heavenly Father, from their loved ones, from their families, and from their friends due to uh, maybe because the schools have closed, the 
People are not going to church anymore. I pray, mighty Father, that you may comfort their hearts, Heavenly Father. I pray, O oh Lord, that you may be with them, that they will have hope that soon enough we will see each other again. And I would also like to pray for the separation that we are experiencing emotionally, Heavenly Father. That those people who have um, strife with their loved ones, Heavenly Father, I pray, mighty Father, that we will become the peace that we desire so badly, Heavenly Father, because your word says that blessed are the peacemakers for they are the children of God and I pray mighty father we will not stop we will not just wait for peace to happen that we will go and we will kneel before you to pray that you may give us strength that we may be the peace that our families need heavenly father and I would also like to pray for um, every Christian who is experiencing some form of sadness because we cannot come together mighty father to worship you Lord I pray heavenly father that you will be with us king of kings I pray that um we will look to you each and every day through your word. We will get hope, we will get encouragement, we will get comfort, Heavenly Father, that soon enough we will come together and we'll have reunion with one another, that we will commune with one another like we were used to, oh God. We thank you so much for what we have right now, mighty Father, and I pray that we will continue to look unto you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray and believe, amen. Amen, and amen. Lord, even in the same breath of prayer, we are cognizant of the fact that it is you who unifies us. It is you who has purchased us by the blood of Christ that we may come together as a fold as Christians, O oh Lord. And so, Lord, I pray for our unity with you. I pray for our connection with you, that, Lord, you will hold us fast, that we will be reminded daily, Lord, that you will hold us fast, that even as we have sung, Lord, that we are not alone, that you will go before us, that you will guide us, that you will walk with us, that you will strengthen our communion with you, O oh Lord, and even our communion with one another, that, Lord, we will glorify you in everything that we do, in every, uh, in every part that we take part in in this world, O oh Lord, that you will go before us and strengthen us and, and guide us and reassure us in our hearts, Lord, that we are not alone, even in this difficult season, even uh, in this season where there is much anxiety, Lord, I pray that you will guide us and walk with us and that we will have our assurance in you and our faith will be kept in you, O oh Lord. All this to the glory and to the honor of your name do we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you so much for joining us for our extended worship service. Um, thank you to the worship team behind me for taking time to prepare and you know, risk life and death to just come to Nairobi and stand in the gap for the many people who can't. Uh, thanks also to Brian and Leanne for leading us through the service. Uh, indeed, it is a joy, uh, not only to me, but to the entire church that you'll give of your time and of all your energies to come and stand in the gap of many, many people. Bundi Richard is my name. I serve as pastor for Limitless in the youth department here at Mamlaka Hill Chapel. And it is a joy to get yet another opportunity to um, bring forth God's word, uh, albeit uh, uh, just for a few minutes here and there, as we bring a uh, to a close the series that we have been on for the past month, the entirety of July, uh, the one that got away. And I do not know if there are many things that have gotten away from everything that we have sung, prayed about, and even preached through. Um, we've talked about family, we've talked about uh, the world entirely, you know, stand by me. We've talked about the disunity that exists amongst us. And last week, the assurance of salvation, as the worship team sang, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And I just thought it wise, as we conclude, um, to consider one passage of scripture. Um, Luke chapter 15, Luke chapter 15, from verses 1 to 7, speaks about the parable of the lost sheep. Uh, Jesus has come from visiting uh, the house of one of the Pharisees. It's on the Sabbath and they're enjoying a meal uh, together. And so many things happen in this period of time. As he's about to depart, um, people begin to follow him and he's about to make his grand exit. And so in verse 1, I'll be reading from the New King James of Luke chapter 15, uh, says then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Uh, you will notice two categories of people. We have tax collectors and sinners, and we have Pharisees and scribes. And all these people are thronging 
towards Jesus Christ probably speaks to the influence that Jesus had both to the rich, to the poor, to the highly esteemed, to the lowly esteemed. Everyone wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. And we see now the tax collectors and sinners drawing much nearer to him to listen to him. But in verse 2, we see the Pharisees and the scribes complaining that Jesus accepts sinners into his presence and even eats with them. Here we see the pride that exists in the people who feel they rightfully belong with the things of God. They see Jesus having uh, the time of his life speaking to these people who will be deemed uh, ready for hell. Uh, no one will want to give them any, any mindset, any, any reason to you know, have a meal with them, talk with them. For these guys were fleecing people of their money, of their wealth. And it was considered that these people had nothing to do with Jesus. And you know, that's the state of our heart today. There are many people that Christ wants to reach to, but in our own comfort zones, we say, you know, I'm saved already. I, I'm okay already. Why, why tell someone about the love of Christ? What would I miss? What would I miss if I myself am already set for life? Um, why would anyone else need to come to Jesus, the closet Christian, the person who desires not to share his candle, thinking that it will be turned off should he do so? So Jesus speaks this parable in light of what is happening. And in verse 4 gives this parable and says, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? Here we see where people are brought back from. Jesus tries to relate to this uh, scenario and uh, this is a Jewish nation. They valued their cattle, their sheep, and you know, if even one of them was lost, they knew exactly what they had to do so as to go and bring it back. So he asked them, "If you had lost one from the hundred, wouldn't you have done everything and anything to get it?" Christian, it's important to know exactly what you are being brought from. Because there are many things that we have lost, not only this year, but in our entirety of our lives. Some of us are recovering addicts. Some of us have sinned, and even sinner doesn't fit the profile. We deserve even worse than hell. But in this case, Jesus knows that if he loses even one of the people that are destined for heaven, there is much to lose in this world. The greatest benefit is accrued to the one that he has that knows that he has lost everything and he needs to bring it back. But as Christians, we do not think we have lost anything. We need to know that we need to be brought from a world that is so dark, a world that cares nothing about the state of our souls. It will use us like chewing gum, like tissue paper, and only to throw us away after it has derived its delight. Such is the world we live in today. It is wise for you to know exactly what you are being brought from. But secondly, verse 5, and when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. Not only knowing where we have been brought from, but also knowing who we are being brought by. The great shepherd, Jesus Christ, puts his sheep on his shoulder and leads it safely home. He gives it no chance to escape. He holds it fast and assures it that I will get you home. And when he gets home, he finds friends and neighbors. Christian, it is important to know who you're being brought back by. Some of us desire to be brought back to our joy by drugs, by women, by wealth, by profit, by fame, by prosperity, hoping that they will lead us safely home. But once we get to the so-called home, we don't find friends and neighbors. We don't find people who rejoice to find us in that place. But Jesus says, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. We can trust Jesus Christ to lead us safely home. Some of us don't know exactly what they will find in heaven. Some of us think it will be a never-ending, limitless service. Some of us think it will be just sermons upon sermons, singing upon singing, uh, sore throats. No one cares about me. There will be no food. Uh, there will be no marriage. And it seems like heaven isn't a place to be. When Jesus brings us home, he rejoices because he knew 
exactly where we were leading. We were lost in darkness where people didn't care a hoot about us. And so Christ says to these people, rejoice with me for I have found my sheep which was lost. But lastly, verse 7, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over the sinner who repents than over the 99 just persons who need repentance. Not only knowing where you have been brought back from, who you're being brought back by, and also not just who you're being brought back to, but lastly, just knowing what joy there exists in the place where you will be. He says that likewise, in as much joy as you derive in the things that you have lost in this world and you get them back, there'll be much more joy in heaven over the one sinner than those who need no repentance. And some of us look at that text and we say, I'm part of the 99. I'm part of the 99. I can't be the one. Scripture repeatedly tells us that there is none who is righteous. No, not one. Isaiah 53 verse 6 tells us that, you know, um, like sheep all have been led astray. There is no one who is righteous. Flash alert. We are the one. The whole world is the one. That those of us who are already in the fold, your salvation will never be taken away from you. But once you get the pride that you are part of the 99 and Christ doesn't need my repentance anymore, um, I don't know what you will do then. I don't know what you will do then when you actually meet your maker and realize that you are part of the, you, you are actually the one rather than the 99. Jesus Christ gives the reality of what it will mean for the sinner to be brought back. In heaven, there is joy overflowing for the one engrafted rather than the many who feel justified to be in his presence. In his presence. So let me ask us just one question. In the seasons of your life that visit you and tempt you to run away like the sheep that goes astray, at what cost, at what cost are you willing to be brought back? At what cost are you willing to be bound together to Jesus Christ and the things of God? Is it at the cost of your pride or your fame, a momentous joy? Something that you think will give you joy eternally, but you know and how the story goes, it's only for a moment. At what cost are you willing to wish it all away. I have lost so many things in my life. And the reason why we do ministry is not for, it's not for the money. It's not for the money. The reason we hold the service each and every week is not for publicity or the views. It's because we realize how much we have lost. And you get to a place and you see young people losing the same, same things. And, you know, if only one, if only one would listen and know how much he has lost, to be brought back to the one who will give him everything, things that shall not be destroyed by rats and moths, you know. But some of us work daily, daily, only wanting to cure the addiction, but have nothing with Jesus Christ, only wanting to gain their wealth and their fame and their prosperity back, but have nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Would we desire to be bound together to Jesus Christ? Don't, don't gamble it all away. And I don't know who might be with us today. And that you will trust that if you have lost anything and you are the one who got away, you can trust that the path of Christ works and it makes sense and he will lead you. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together. Bind us together with love. Bind us. Bind us 
together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together. So, Lord, would you um, help us all um, in our lives, in our families, um, in everything that we do? Would you bring us back to you uh, for your glory and our good and joy and peace? For this I do pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, guys, we are really glad that you were able to stream to the end, and we hope and pray that you have been edified, that you have grown, that you have prayed, and that you feel reassured in your heart. We are thankful for the worship team, we are thankful to Bundi, and we pray that you guys will look forward to our new series. But at this time, um, Lian and I would like to say goodbye, and um, yeah, have a nice week, and we hope to see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Yes, as always, we have one last song, just one last one. So wake up if you are seated, if you're in your bed, stand up as we dance and sing hallelujah unto the Lord. Yes, till we meet again next Sunday, this is the last song. Thank you. <laughs> Come on.
Sunday.